The year is 1911. The Supreme Court case of the United States of America is about to give the final ultimate sentence for the court case of the Standard Oil Company of New Jersey versus the United States of America. What happens here will change the American market and equal opportunity for business in America. But how did it get here? To understand the importance of this case, we have to go back, back to the year 1880. These four men, better known as John D. Rockefeller, William Rockefeller, Samuel Andrews, and Henry Flager, are about to form the greatest trust group in American history. They are the owners of the biggest oil company of the time, and they are about to go bigger. So, gentlemen, is it all agreed here? Yeah, we're um, finishing the details on our trust right now. And to my understanding, from this point forward, we're going to start buying little companies so we can control the oil to our favor. Yes, and with the new trust and our already control over the stock market, we'll be richer than ever. Yes, and with no law regulating this, who's going to stop us? Not the government. And after that, Standard Oil began to buy up the other oil businesses and convert them to shareholders of the Standard Oil Trust. There wasn't anyone they couldn't force out of business with dirty tricks like lowering the price of kerosene and other oil byproducts so that no one would go to anyone else. Then, when the competition was gone, raise the prices to ridiculous amounts. But it wasn't long before people got fed up with this millionaire's holiday. Trust like the Standard Oil Trust would soon be illegal with the passing of the Sherman Antitrust Act for 1890, named after Ohio Senator John Sherman. Two years later, in 1892, the state of Ohio was the first state to successfully sue the Standard Oil Company, but it would take almost 20 years, the year of 1911, to successfully dissolve the company known as Standard Oil. Our conclusion is that the decree below was right, and should be affirmed except as to the minor matters concerning which we have indicated the decree should be modified. Our order will therefore be one of affirmance with direction. However, to modify the decree in accordance with this opinion, the court below must retain jurisdiction to the extent necessary to compel compliance in every respect with this decree. And it is so ordered. And just like that, all the lower court lawsuits were still effective and executed. Now, let's have a chat with Mr. White, the man who gave the final verdict of the case. Excuse me, Mr. White, do you have a minute? Spence was asking. And not the newspapers. Well then, do share. Do you feel that you and your uh, fellow justices use precedence on this case? Yes, every one of us justices believed that Standard Oil was indeed violating the Sherman Antitrust Act, and there, that the inferior courts were correct by ruling. But however, we also have altered the act, and then only unreasonable trusts are illegal, much like the one that Standard Oil has provided us with. So, what exactly were they violating in the Sherman Trust? Well, the Sherman Antitrust Act states that the group of people, corporation, or conspiracy that tries to restrict trade or dis distribution of a market is to be convicted up to one year in prison, or fined $5,000, or both. Thank you, Mr. White. Now, now that we understand what the court case was about, how did it affect the future? All right, I'll take it from here. Thank you. The decision of this court case would affect the future monopoly of the phone business. AT&T used to control the phone market up until the 1940s, where it was charged with using trusts and was dissolved into companies like Verizon and Sprint, as well as AT&T. Standard Oil was dissolved into multiple companies too, like Exxon and Mobil. Other companies, such as Microsoft, have also been tried to have a monopoly of the computer business, all thanks to what happened in the 1911 Supreme Court case of Standard Oil Company of New Jersey versus the United States of America. Without this case, many of our products would only be made by a handful of companies with no competition. It of the riches, it should also be stated that John D. Rockefeller and his buddies were already some of the richest men alive during the 1911 court case. So much of the antitrust regulation was too late to prevent them from cheating many Americans of their wealth. But even with that, the court case has proved influential in the decision of many antitrust court cases. <laughs>